evening, I'm Patricia Vallone with a CTV News update. The trial of former Minneapolis police officer Derek Chauvin is underway. He's charged with the murder of George Floyd, an incident that sparked national protests. The jury heard opening arguments from the prosecution and defense. Chauvin is charged with second and third degree murder and manslaughter for holding his knee to Floyd's neck for more than nine minutes, resulting in his death. The jury was shown the video that shows the moment when Floyd took his last breath. During this period of time, you will learn that Mr. Chauvin is told that they can't even find the pulse of Mr. Floyd. You will learn he's told that twice. They can't even find the pulse. You will be able to see for yourself what he does in response. You will see that he does not let up and that he does not get up, even when Mr. Floyd does not even have a pulse. If convicted, Chauvin faces up to 40 years behind bars. Four Prince George's County firefighters have been injured in two separate incidents. The first occurred just after 8 this morning at the house on the 2300 block of Thorn Knoll Drive in Fort Washington. Two firefighters received burns to their extremities and were taken to a hospital in stable condition. Two other firefighters were injured while battling a blaze in the 8100 block of Finch Court. The residents were able to get out safely, but it was while firefighters were inside that the roof collapsed. One of those firefighters was able to self-evacuate. The other firefighter had to be pulled out from underneath the debris by uh, the rest of his crew members. That firefighter is the one who was more significantly burned. So of the two firefighters, both of them were transported to an area burn unit. Uh, one firefighter was treated and released that day. The second firefighter, what we can tell you about him is that he's in serious condition, but stable with non-life threatening injuries and he's in good spirits. The cause of both fires remains under investigation. Five adults and two children have been displaced by a fire in Capitol Heights. Flames tore through a two-story home in the 4800 block of Gunther Street about 530 this morning. No one was home at the time, but the fire was so severe that the house has been deemed uninhabitable. No word on the cause. And in state news, Maryland is expected to receive a major boost in vaccine supplies this week. Governor Larry Hogan says the federal government is committed to send about 340,000 doses through May. We're getting our finally our second batch of J&J &J vaccines, more Moderna, more Pfizer, and we have commitments from the federal government that that's going to continue all through April and May. Um, and enable us to uh, vaccinate millions of people over the next two months. Meantime, COVID-19 cases are rising in Maryland nearly two weeks after Governor Hogan eased statewide restrictions. And that's Maryland is reporting now more than 1,000 new COVID-19 cases for the sixth straight day. Meantime, nine Marylanders have died from the virus in the last 24 hours. Currently, more than 1,000 residents are hospitalized with the virus. The fate of Governor Larry Hogan's acting health secretary could be decided today. Dennis Schrader is expected to appear before the Senate's Committee on Executive Nominations. Schrader's fate could hinge on how well his agency handles an expected surge in COVID-19 vaccines. Many lawmakers have been critical of the state's vaccination response so far. Schrader has been acting head of the department since late last year. Howard County Executive Calvin Ball says hate has no place in his community. An Asian woman was attacked while walking on a Clarksville path last week when several Asian-owned businesses were vandalized in the county in February. Following these incidents and recent fatal shootings in Atlanta, Ball says the divisiveness has to stop. The negativity focused on, uh, at this time, our Asian brothers and sisters is unacceptable. And I think this is an opportunity to fight against all hate and racism in any forms, against our Asian brothers and sisters, our Latino, Hispanic, Black and Brown, anyone. Hate has no place here when we're trying to unify in our country and to form, frankly, a more perfect union. Meantime, Ball says he has launched an AAPI work group to address issues in the Asian American community. And you are watching CTV News. I'm Patricia Vallone. We'll be back in just a moment.
For the latest information on COVID-19 in Maryland, visit the State Health Department website. That's health.maryland.gov. Again, health.maryland.gov. Click the link to the COVID-19 information portal. There you'll find all the latest information about coronavirus. You'll find daily updates on cases and fatalities. Answers to questions about testing and the governor's stay-at-home order are available as well. For specific information about Prince George's, visit PrinceGeorgesCountyMD.gov. That's PrinceGeorgesCountyMD.gov. The site offers information about local services for residents and businesses. There's a link for COVID-19 relief donations. Also, food pantry locations are listed. And if you have any questions, call the county COVID-19 hotline at 301-883-6627. That's 301-883-6627. I am what child hunger looks like in America. I am a nine-year-old boy who hopes a friend invites me to a sleepover so I can have dinner. I am a 15-year-old girl who goes for walks during lunch so my friends won't know I don't have anything to eat. I am a 13-year-old boy who gets into fights at school just because I'm hungry. I was created by artificial intelligence from faces of the one in seven American children who struggle with hunger. Kids you pass by every day but never knew they were hungry. Feeding America, 200 food banks strong. There was a time in my life where I was extremely homesick. I decided that I needed a pet. When I first saw a turtle, my heart was full. He jumped up and kissed me and like jumped right into my arms. I immediately went up to the volunteers at the shelter and said, I want him, like, he's gotta come home with me. Not anything but lonely. Every day with turtle is a perfect day and keeps me company when I'm doing schoolwork. I like it when he jumps up on the table, too. He is a veggie thief. He's an incredible companion and my best friend. Can't say that I've met anybody that doesn't love him, too. When I adopted Turtle, I discovered all the things that make him unique. He's a little bit of a lot of things, but mostly he's all pure love. Welcome back. Prince George's police are investigating a crime in which two men, both with gunshot wounds, were found in a car. The vehicle was discovered just after 10 Saturday night in the 1100 block of Merrimack Drive in the Langley Park area. One man died at the scene. The other remains hospitalized with non-life-threatening injuries. And a Montgomery County mother is charged with the attempted murder of her three-year-old daughter. 28-year-old Ann Akers was found in her Wheaton home with a pair of scissors and a laceration to her neck. Officers arrived at her residence in the 13,000 block of Hathaway Drive after a relative had entered the premises, found blood on the floor, and called police. When officers removed a blanket Akers was holding, they discovered her daughter with life -threatening, a life-threatening laceration to the neck. Both were transported to area hospitals with serious injuries. Senator Chris Van Hollen discusses the digital divide with Maryland teachers. It was part of a virtual roundtable discussion this morning. Educators and parents shared their views on the challenges of virtual learning. And Van Hollen gave updates on assistance being provided by Capitol Hill. In the American Rescue Plan, uh, we uh, have provided uh, seven billion dollars this was something that the commissioner um, and many of us um, in the senate house worked on for the e-rate program which is specifically designed uh, to help students uh, connect to the internet and and internet connectivity has been a tremendous challenge and, and need for us as well we have um, uh, supported over fifteen thousand students again similar to baltimore city the fcc also participated in the discussion 
Well, some good news. Families across the county will now have access to many park facilities. Beginning today, the agency has opened up several community centers for access to fitness rooms, gyms, and swimming pools. Nature centers at Watkins Park, Clearwater, and Mount Rainier are also open to visitors. Officials say you have to make a reservation in advance to use any of the facilities. And for COVID precautions, we are requiring a temperature check when you arrive at the facility. Uh, face masks are required indoors and out. And we are still practicing social distancing. We look forward to seeing our local residents back. Um, we've missed them. It's been a long 12 months without them. So um, we're just thrilled to be able to start the reopening process now. And to reserve your spot, visit pgparksdirect.com. A bill that offers rebates for EV charging equipment and a tax credit for the purchase of electric vehicles heads to the Maryland Senate after passing the House. HB 44, or the Clean Cars Act of 2021, hit a snag when the pandemic started. But now its sponsor, Delegate David Frazier Hidalgo, says he's hopeful it'll get back on track. We have a lot of folks that have um, purchased, a lot of Marylanders who have purchased their electric cars and haven't been reimbursed for their, for their tax credits. So the bill as it is now will reimburse um, just about all of those people that have purchased vehicles over the last three years and get them current. Um, there was a little bit of a snafu with some of the Mar of some of the federal dollars coming down and whether that was the tax credit was going to be in conflict um, with the federal plan. Um, and so there was some concern as to whether Maryland would lose money if we had a tax credit program, which I think is a problem with a lot of states around the country. And that's just because of the way the, the federal $1.9 trillion relief package came down. I think it's probably more of an oversight on their port part, but until we get clarification, we pulled out moving forward out of the bill. And uh, I'm sure by next year that will be clarified, cleared up, and then I'll put another bill in next year to try to help us go getting up to about 2025. A hearing on the bill is scheduled for this afternoon before the Senate Finance Committee. Meantime, the city of Mount Rainier is adding three new charging stations for electric vehicles, continuing a growth trend along Route 1 in Prince George's County. The most recent additions are at parking spots in the 35th Street in the downtown area to encourage visitors checking out nearby restaurants. Hyattsville, Riverdale, and College Park have similar setups. The EV stations were installed by the city through Pepco's EV Smart Public Charging Program. The deadline for filling out a countywide legacy survey is fast approaching. The Responsible Legacy Task Force is reviewing the names of county monuments, parks, and buildings. If a statue or park is named after a Confederate sympathizer or even a slave owner, the group will determine whether or not a name change is needed. The deadline to fill out this survey is March 31st. For more information, you can visit the County Council website. Well, it was a sour Sweet 16 loss for the Maryland Terrapins. The Lady Terps, with the highest ranked offense in the nation, took on the Texas Longhorns last night. The Longhorns' defense stifled Maryland, though, holding the team to a season-low 61 points. The loss ends a great season and a 15-game winning streak for the Lady Terps. Well, let's get a quick check now for our three-day weather forecast. Tonight, clear with a low near 35. Tuesday, sunny with a high near 67 and a low around 53. Wednesday, some clouds and showers. A daytime high near 66 and low around 40. Thursday, mostly sunny with a high near 49 and a low around 30. And now for your community calendar. The deadline to apply for the Summer Youth Enrichment Program is approaching. The program offers employment opportunities for youth ages 14 to 22. This year, there will be more virtual options to limit in-person contact during the pandemic. Applications are due by Wednesday, March 31st. For more information, visit princegeorgesmd.gov and search for SYEP. And that wraps up our newscast for tonight. Join us again tomorrow, same time, same place. Have a great evening.